Hi everyone. <laughs> okay, I had to fix this broadcast because it wasn't broadcasting directly to all my destinations. I'm doing one live on three platforms. My personal Facebook page, our business Facebook page, and of course on YouTube. Uh, so today's video is about immigration. It was this week. No, the week of November 5, November 5, 2021. And the first thing I say is say hello to my very first guest and um, uh, follower, Ali. Hi, Ali. You're from Chicago. I'm from New Jersey today. But my office is in New York City in Brooklyn. And it's very cold in New York right now. It went from summer to like winter pretty much overnight. A lot of people are experiencing some sort of, um, you know, like sadness and maybe uh, a little bit of a, like a fall um, mood change. Things are kind of wilting in nature. Things here on the East Coast of the United States are turning cold and kind of dark and the leaves turned yellow and started to fall. From the trees so we're all experiencing a little bit of like a downshift right now and uh, I feel the same so if anybody out there is feeling what I'm feeling just say hi drop a comment below I would love to hear from you just to let us know we're all in the same boat although actually I have a friend in Florida and she's saying the same thing it's just a seasonal change and everybody's feeling a little sad a little on the downshift now is a good time to start taking good care of yourself and taking care of your immigration status. I've been doing a lot of consultations this week and I find that people are waiting for the immigration amnesty and for the reform. And if you've been following my videos and my channel, you, you've been watching videos that I do discussing the progress of uh, the amnesty or the reform in uh, the U.S. Congress, we make laws by the U.S. Constitution here in America in Congress. Congress is made up of the House of Representatives and Senate, and the first stage it has to pass when it's a new law is Congress. Right now, they're working on a financial bill, a proposed law to balance our budget. It's just to address all the money that the government will be spending on different federal programs, and Democrats, uh, led by President Biden and his administration, have been asking them to pass some sort of an immigration reform to fix our broken system, starting with the backlogs, but of course focusing on the 11 plus million, which I think is actually like 18 million, um, undocumented illegal immigrants in America today. And I kind of have bad news because the talks about pathway to citizenship have kind of died down. I don't think there's going to be a real plan D or anything like that. I read a big article in Politico. Politico is an insider publication that, uh, you know, they talk to uh, politicians behind closed doors. They do their own investigations. They find information that's happening in Congress right now as we speak, and they said that the talks about uh, green cards, a real pathway to citizenship, have pretty much died as part of the immigration reform in the budget reconciliation bill. So that doesn't look like it's going to happen. But they are discussing something like five-year work permits five-year work permits, only work authorization for certain categories of illegal immigrants like DACA, people who still don't have DACA. So that's people who are brought here as children to the United States by parents or aunts or uncles or relatives and never legalized. Like agricultural workers and like people from certain very unstable, volatile countries where wars are raging as we speak right now. So... It's not anymore a discussion about green cards for essential workers. I don't think it's going to happen. It's not anymore a discussion for green cards of parents of U.S. citizens. That's not happening. And I would like for people to basically stop waiting for this to happen. 
because in my career, and I've been practicing immigration law since 2002, pretty much, almost 20 years, every amnesty that's happened was only for like a certain, um, you know, category of people. It never covered everyone, and it's not going to happen this year. 2021. I don't think this budget bill is going to pass with immigration in it. Okay. I'm being honest with you. Maybe I'm a pessimist, but I'm telling you, this is going to happen. I think that if something is going to happen, it might start to be discussed again in 2022 next year. The best we can do this year is hope for some work permits for five years for very few categories of people like DACA agricultural workers and like temporary protective status type countries that are going through war and they're not yet on the TPS list. That's what they're talking about behind closed doors. Yes, a couple of Democrats are still thinking about some sort of a plan C or plan D, but the hopes that the parliamentarian is going to allow this through are very low. It's not going to happen. And, um, you know, the, the biggest problem right now for them is, get it, is getting the money part straightened out. It's not about legalizing immigrants. So again, I don't think you guys should be waiting. If you have a case for asylum, if you're living in a bad marriage to a U.S. citizen, if there's a way to legalize but you've been holding off for that reform, I don't think you should do it anymore. I think you should file something right away don't wait for next year start now i feel like government fees will go up next year legal fees for us and everybody else will go up as well because i'm sure if you guys are sh shopping for food you see how much more expensive everything is gas has gone up food everything supplies groceries so everything is going to go up in price next year i recommend you file something right away and you stop waiting for this immigration reform this year it might happen but not this year i hope you guys don't get mad at me and call me names but feel free to drop a comment if you disagree with me i will listen i will take your opinion but this is just my opinion and my experience and i thank you for watching just gonna do some comments here before i get to the next part jawide um says hello atika says, oh, problem with sound. Yeah, I had to reload. I hope you guys can hear me now. I had to reload um, my stream and I hope it's happening now. Let me see if I can maybe, um, let me see if I can reboot this. Okay. <laughs> okay. I hope you guys can see me and hear me now. Hi. I'm trying to fix the problem with sound for you. Okay. Good Friday. Happy Friday. Ali says, you a citizen. Is there any way I could fix my status? I'm paying tax for 2016. Right now, there's no way to do it. You just have to wait if your kids or spouse are US citizens and we can talk. But just because you've been paying taxes since 2016 doesn't mean you can fix your status right now. So that's it. Um, how about F4 category? I assume you're asking about backlog. There's nothing happening with that. They're just trying uh, to fix this problem with backlog just by starting to schedule more people. But it's still happening. Um, there's a question about can... Todd bring his kids or her kids here with parole. 
You can file for humanitarian parole, but it's really difficult to get approved. And you have to prove very unique, very bad, extreme hardship to the kids if they stay in your country and don't come here with parole. Today's topic, other than the news that I prepared for you guys, has to do with work permits. So I'm not going to discuss all the work permit uh, categories that are out there. I'm just going to discuss the major ones that we deal with. So certain categories, both of immigrants, people who are waiting for a green card, and non-immigrant visa holders are allowed to work legally in the United States. If you get a work permit, then you can get a social security number and start paying taxes, okay? So everybody knows you need the work permit now, the work authorization to be able to get a social security card, to get a driver's license or non-driver ID. So people really want that work permit. I get people calling me every day. They don't even care what category or what adjustment of status or what legalization we get for them. They just want the work permit. They're willing to go to great lengths only to get the work permit. I have people that I'm consulting all the time that come from paralegals or other lawyers and they tell me that uh, they filed for something. They don't even know what they filed for, but they got a work permit. And then I look at what they filed for and they were completely not eligible for whatever was filed for them. I had seen people filing for marriage to a U.S. citizen VAWA abuse cases where they were never married to a U.S. citizen. They didn't have a U.S. citizen spouse. But some paralegal out there sent their paperwork and they did get the work permit. So that's completely fraudulent and it's definitely going to come, come back to bite you on the butt. But people do this because they're desperate to get the work permit. The work permit opens the doors again. I'm repeating myself, but some people are just joining me. Uh, the work permit opens the door to getting a social security number and ID, driver's license. So because of that, the work permit is very important to people. So today's discussion is about the code category on the work permit. So whenever you apply for a work permit, you file a form, an application. It's called Form I-765, Application for Employment Authorization. And on the form, it's important to put down all the correct information, name, address, uh, date of birth, and all that. But even more important is to choose the correct category that you are eligible to work in, okay? Because some people are not eligible for anything, unfortunately. And some people are eligible for more than one. So when we at our law firm file for somebody, we pick one. The categories or the codes go by letter, okay? And you can check out, you could just Google EAD eligibility categories. So the categories that are eligible to get the work permit, but I will mention a few that we use over and over again. First of all, if you are here and you filed for asylum, you waited and you filed for asylum, you filed in time, and you are eligible to work as somebody who's expecting or awaiting pending asylum. You're afraid to return to your country. You filed the form I-589. Now, 150 days later, you file for the work permit. Okay? The category is C, like cat, C08. And when you get your work permit card, it's a plastic card, you will see the C08 on it. And that will mean that you are in the category of awaiting asylum. If you filed for a green card, whether it's through a family petition, husband or wife, your kids over 21, uh, your sibling and you're in status and finally you got here and you're in status and your brother or sister's petition is current, any of those categories who filed for I-485 application to adjust status inside the United States, application for green card, are allowed to get a work permit. The fee is included. You don't have to pay separately for the work permit. And the code is C, 
C09 is the code for people awaiting green cards, okay? If you file for VAWA, Violence Against Women Act petition, abuse petition, and you're also filing at the same time, simultaneously in the same package for your green card, you also get a work permit in the category C09. But if for some reason you didn't file for green card, you weren't eligible, you only filed the VAWA I-360 alone, when that gets approved and only when it gets approved, there's a separate category for the work permit for C-31. And as a matter of fact, nowadays, because we file a lot of VAWA petitions and the client is approved, before I even get an approval notice, I get the work permit for that client with a C-31 code. That tells me this man or this woman were approved for VAWA because the code is C-31. If you're here as a student on an F-1 visa, F like Frank 1 visa, you're really not eligible to work and you won't get a work permit. But if you can demonstrate an extreme hardship, which means uh, you have to support your family and work no matter what. Yes, you're a student, but you need a job and you have to provide and your school has to sponsor you for it. You can get a, a work permit in the category of C03 and you will get a work permit that says that. Those are the main categories that we deal with. At the end of the list is DACA C33. So people who are eligible for DACA and right now are renewing DACA, they're getting work permits in the category of C33. There's a bunch of other categories for refugees and diplomatic visas and spouses of H visa holders and stuff. I'm not really going to go over them because we don't really do that much in those categories. Most of our immigration work has to do with asylum or VAWA or family petitions or motions to reopen appeals and once in a while extraordinary ability visa people. Uh, but that's filing for a green card. So as I mentioned, the green card applicants file for work permit in C09 category. This seems like a simple topic, but it's important because it explains what categories are allowed to work in the United States while waiting for something to be decided in their cases or when they're approved. I also then mention a couple of important people categories that we do deal with, and that's withholding of removal that's for people who went to court on their asylum case and unfortunately couldn't go all the way up to asylum, but the judge gave them withholding of removal, withholding of deportation, which means, yes, they were deported technically, but the judge says, we're not going to physically remove you. We're not going to send you out. You're going to get status and be able to be here legally as somebody who has withholding of removal. They get a work permit as well. There's also work permit for deferred action, people, GED, and that's also legal and you can work here. If you were deported and you couldn't leave because maybe your country doesn't accept you, believe it or not, I see this all the time. Somebody files for asylum, the judge orders them removed, the case is bad, they didn't go through, but the country refuses to take the person. You can still file for a work permit and that category is allowed to work here legally because their country is not taking them so we're going to give status to someone like that. That's pretty much it as far as my topic that I prepared for today. We briefly discussed immigration news. Um, in the beginning talked about the fact that it doesn't look like there's going to be green cards for anybody this year as part of the budget reconciliation plan maybe under a big question mark maybe five-year permit for certain categories, but we'll see. And I said before, and I'm going to repeat myself at this later, later stage in my video, please stop waiting for the amnesty. If you have a case, file it. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. God forbid ICE stops you. God forbid something happens. You need to file your case. Don't wait until the end of the year. File it today. Late uh, filing is still going to be good for this year. The fees for all the applications will probably go up next year. Legal fees will go up for everyone. Believe me, things are getting more expensive because of the inflation and COVID. 
So I recommend you file. Just a reminder that anybody filing for a green card now has to have a medical exam that includes your vaccination against COVID. You have to be vaccinated with both doses of COVID vaccine before you can do a medical for your green card or visas for any visa category abroad, overseas, that needs the medical. I'm going to jump into more questions now. Um, so Jay says they're watching, he's watching from Sierra Leone. Hi, how are you? It's probably not cold by you, but it's cold by us today. Hi, Marina says Sanam. Sheldon says good morning. Jawide says good morning. Oh, is it true bill voting today? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure it's going to happen today. Why they don't see the cutoff date up to 2021 and plan C? Okay, I talked about this last week. So they discussed um, taking an old law that's called adjustment of status with registry for people who are here from 1972 and before and changing the date from 1972 to 2010. So it would be like they talked about this. It didn't go through. It would be like legalizing everyone who's here through 2010. So they're asking, Mahesh, Mahesh is asking, why not make it 2021? I have no idea. I don't know what's in their brain, why they picked 2010, no idea. She or Shai says, good Friday morning. Hi, good, good morning. Uh, Jawad says he wishes that they would change the date, the cutoff date for the register. It doesn't look like any date is going through, so I don't think we have to worry about this. Hey, what's new about the I-130 from Ethiopia? Nothing new, it's still the same. Fadei says, my IR-1 visa has been issued since the 29th last month, but up until now, I haven't received my visa and package back. I don't know why. You know, because of COVID, everything is delayed. You'll get it back. Just give it another week or two. Ali says, hi, I'm here since 2015. Got married with a U.S. citizen. Married stayed three years and after that we divorced now it's more than two years of divorce my parents are green card holders and my sister and her kids uh you should have filed for vava uh when you got divorced since it's been more than two years it's too late for vava and uh if your mom or um your siblings file for you you have to wait for the visas to become available then you can try to do it with the waiver but the chances are not great um, okay, we just talked about this. Uh, Atika says, you're good. Thank you so much. Todd says, can I bring my kid to throw? We discussed this. After VAWA is approved, how long does it take for USCIS to send the approved VAWA case to the local state of residence? It takes about a year. Yes, it takes about a whole year if you live in my area, from my experience. Some states, it's a little faster. But for some reason, once they approve VAWA, the transfer of the case from Vermont to the local field office where you live takes a while, like a year. And if it's less, that's great. But don't give yourself stress by thinking it's going to be really quick. It might take a whole year. If it goes through and we get five-year permit, will someone with double entry and married to U.S. citizen be able to adjust status inside the U.S.? Consular processing will trigger a bar. I don't know. We'll see how it passes. We'll see. Please, I have a question, says Hana. Okay. Wonder Good says, hey, hope you're doing good. Do you really think that they will include all essential workers? I don't think so. Not this year. I don't think they will. Is Skippy, so Jasmine says, is skipping the queue by paying the 2500 for my family-based visa still in the reconciliation bill. Not really, no. It's not there anymore. Umbrina says, hello for Plan C. What's going to happen after five years? I don't know. I'm not even sure they will pass this Plan C. And um, it's very difficult for me to guess because I'm not sure if this is even going to happen. So I don't have the brain power to sit there and think of all the possibilities of things that might not even be happen. And I understood you meant 2500 penalty. They discussed it early on. It's not in the discussion anymore. She or Shai says, how about those who already have social security numbers from an overstayed work visa? 
I'm currently working on paying taxes. Will this parole make any sense to avail? It's hard to say. They're talking about legalizing only few categories, and your category is really not what they're discussing. Sorry about that. Today says, when your immigrant case status shows issued, how long does it take before you receive your package and visa? It depends on the consulate. Some consulates will take three, four weeks. Some will take a week. Some will take maybe two months. It depends where you are, and COVID has slowed things down. Uh, Habib says, my voice is not so clear enough to hear. Uh, my volume is at the highest. I hope it's working now. Uh, Hana says, I'm watching. Hi. Uh, SMT says, if it goes through, I assume you're talking about amnesty, and we get five-year permits, will someone with double entry... Oh, we did this already. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Clearly described everything. Oh, Jasmina, thank you so much. And I'm going to wrap up today because I'm pretty much done with everything I had planned. I thank you for watching. I'm going to try to do this every Friday. So far, I've been doing it for like three or four Fridays in a row. And it's been working for myself and you guys really well. This video will remain on our channel, on our YouTube channel, so you can come back and watch it later if you're working and maybe you couldn't catch the live. I appreciate all your comments and questions. I hope that you have more questions for next week. I will try to plan uh, po posting it ahead of time, but actually I'm not sure I will be here next Friday because I will be on vacation in sunny Florida since I couldn't take the cold anymore. I'm going to take a few days with my family and go to Florida so I think there will be no live next Friday but I will return to the Friday after that I have time for two more questions and I'm done uh, there um, Darren Kemi uh, says I applied for asylum in July 2021 did my biometrics and interview referred to immigration court for November 2022 do you think I will get a work permit absolutely you should apply when it's 150 days from July of 2021 when you filed. And using uh, the law that's in existence now for applying for asylum, you should be able to get it, but it's going to take some time. Uh, Sue Raphael says, can I call you? My phone number is on the bottom of the screen. We're in New York. We do paid consultations only. Our consultation is $230. You might not talk to me. You might have a consultation with one of our legal team, our lawyers who I train and work together for many, many, many years. And you will get the best advice because we all work as a team. Our consultation is paid $230. Uh, exotic joke says, can U.S. citizen child sponsor parents with a crewman visa? Uh, there's options, but you have to call us. It's not something that I can talk about like this. Uh, give us a call for a consultation. We can discuss. Uh, Darren Kami says, hi, hello, and thank you. And answer my question, says Anna, please. What I have no answer. The same birthday in my passport or the one I used when I married and my graduation. I don't know what you're talking about. You have, it seems like you have a discrepancy with birthday. At the asylum interview, they will focus on your ID, your passport, and birth certificate. So if there's a discrepancy, you're going to have to explain the discrepancy and have documents to prove it. Femi says, my dad passed away in 2017 in Chicago. Can his U.S. passport be of help to us with his? Sadly, no. And I'm going to end it on this sad note. <laughs> um, and maybe I'll just have one more because I don't like to end on a sad note. Uh, Osmani says, hello, hi. Asif says, I've been living in the U.S. the last 21 years. Do you think I'm eligible for this bill, Plan C? I don't know, but you might be eligible for something else. Give us a call. This Plan C is not a plan at all right now. Nothing is going to happen. Uh, okay, that's it for today. Good night and have a great weekend, guys. Take care.